Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little. I'm here today with episode 295 of Weekly Poker and I hope you're having a great day. Let's go ahead and get right to it. We are playing a 5, 10, 25 No Limit Hold'em Cash game at Best Bet in Jacksonville. And it falls around to John O and the hijack seat who raises it up to four big blinds with pocket fours, which is perfectly fine and standard. You definitely want to be playing your small pairs when you are somewhat deep stacked. We see John here playing 400 big blinds deep, so certainly a spot where you want to be playing the small pairs because when you make sets, they're usually pretty good. We have a call from the button from Peter with an unknown hand. All right, flop comes 10, six, four, three diamonds. So when you flop bottom set, you're very, very happy. Uh, bottom set's a great hand because it does not block the top pairs, right? If you have pocket tens on 10, six, four, then like what can your opponent really have that he's gonna call a flop turn and river bet with? But when you have bottom set, they could easily have ace 10, queen 10, jack 10, 10, nine, right? The problem though is that you could also be against a flush. And when you're playing 400 big blinds deep, you really don't want to get all your money in with bottom set against a flush. So you have to be relatively cautious. So this is a spot where you wanna be betting for value, right? Because worse hands will call. And for protection, because you don't want a random diamond to come off for free. But at the same time, you have to be cautious if a lot of money does start to go into the pot because you could very easily be crushed and that's not where you wanna be for 400 big blinds. So let's take a look at what he does. If you are enjoying these videos, by the way, click like, click subscribe, leave a review wherever you're watching or listening to it. That would go a long way to helping me help other people who want to improve their poker skills. So we have a bet of $150 into the $240 pot from the pocket fours, which I think is fine. You may want to bet even a little bit bigger. I mean, I'm, I'm nitpicking here, but like I think 175 or 200 may be slightly better because when you are deep stacked, it's almost like the flop bet size and proportion of the pot doesn't matter quite as much. You see this normally in limped pots where you'll see people just betting bigger in limp pots in proportion to the pot because you want to be betting bigger so that you can play a bigger pot if you feel inclined, right? And here with effectively, you know, a, a ton behind, you want to go ahead and bet bigger with most of your range. If like, let's say both players had $500 behind, then sure, you can bet 120, right? But whenever you're playing 9,000 behind, it changes quite a bit. So I would have bet a little bit bigger here. Not much, but just a little bit. You may say, is it isn't even worth mentioning things like that. And whenever I'm having coaching sessions with my students, I really focus on every little thing that I think could be done slightly differently. And right here, when you add an extra like $25 to the bet in this pot, yeah, it doesn't make a ton of difference, but imagine you win this pot I don't know, 60% of the time and you lose it 40%. I know this is very rough math, but putting on that extra $25 chip on average may win you an extra $5 every time this happens. And if this happens, let's say, well, once a day, that's $5 extra per day, you profit. Doesn't sound like a lot of money, but if you do that every day, $5 times $365 or 365 days a year, can't even do that math. It's like $1,600 or something. You win $1,600 out the door each year if this spot comes up 365 times, um, just by adding that extra one big blind bet or one big blind to your bet here. And that that adds up. And there are a lot of little spots like that where good players could make just a little bit more money. And that often uh, will, will give you a, a, nice, a nicer win rate at the end of the year. Imagine there's like 20 spots like this and you make an extra $1,500 a year out the door each time. Well, 1,500 times 20 is what? $30,000? Would you rather make $30,000 more by uh, betting a little bit bigger or not bluffing in some spots or betting a little bit less in some spots, et cetera, et cetera? The answer is yes, you'd rather win $30,000 more. So anyway, uh, we do have a $150 bet and a call. Turn is a five, offsuit five. So 10, six, four, three diamonds, five of clubs. The five is not great for John with his pocket fours, but it's also not bad, right? Realize in this spot that the 8-7 is kind of unlikely. It is a double gut shot. So, I mean, this is a spot where 8-7 certainly exists. You wouldn't think your opponent has too many 8-7 offsuits in his range, though. I mean, I don't know how loose Peter's going to play, but he probably doesn't have 8-7 offsuit. So that means you're only worried about the th four combinations of 8-7 suited. Notice one of them was already a flush. But this is a scenario where it's still very easy for the button to have all sorts of ace-high diamond draws, king-high diamond draws. 
um, stuff like a 10, and all those hands will continue calling if you bet reasonably. Now, pot's $540 on the turn. I think a bet of like $350 is fine. This is a little bit different than on the flop where I was suggesting betting more like 80% of the pot. Now, I think slightly smaller is fine because now your opponent only has one more card to draw to if they do have a flush draw. And uh, if you start betting bigger here, you may start folding out hands like random pocket nines with no diamond, which would be very, very bad, right? So I, I like a bet of about 350 bucks, I think. And now Peter, we get to see his hand. Jack of diamonds, 10 of hearts. This is definitely a hand where... Well, first off, I would have just folded it preflop. I'm not going to call the initial raise with Jack 10 offsuit on the button. I would three bet it or fold. Um, the offsuit hands like this don't really like calling in position because you make middle pair bad kicker or top pair marginal kicker, et cetera, et cetera. And again, that's not really where you want to be deep stacked. So I would have three bet this or folded it. I probably would just three bet it. Like you're essentially taking the hands that are not quite good enough to call and turning them into bluffs. So I like that idea. Anyway, though. He does call preflop. Once you get this flop, top pair plus marginal flush draw is definitely a good hand to call. If you raise and get all the money in, you're really unhappy. On the turn, facing the bet of what looks like $300 from John, I would also just call. There's no reason to raise at all. Because if John is bluffing, he's probably drawing thin. And if he's value betting, well, uh, your hand is sometimes ahead. And if your hand's not ahead, your diamond is often good, right? Very rarely are you, are you going to be against exactly Ace of Diamonds 10. Just doesn't happen that often. So it was a $400 bet by John, which I think is good. Better than $300. Ooh, and then the river's a nasty card. It is a 10 of clubs. So now, pot's $1,340. John has to assume he has the effect of nuts. So now he wants to make a polarized bet here. Whenever you have an effective nut hand in a scenario where you also could have some bluffs in your range, you want to be using a big bet size. Now... This is a, an interesting spot, especially in live poker, because a lot of people, like take a look at this, if, you, if you're watching this on YouTube or on JonathanLittlePoker.com, you can see Peter like intently staring at John. Usually this is an indication of, I'm trying to figure out what's going on here and I'm uh, probably not folding. <laughs> Usually when people are staring you down in a manner that's not like an intimidating stare, stare down, but more of like a, all right, what are you going to do? That kind of stare down. Usually that's, someone who's not going to fold. So if someone's not going to fold, well, what, you should, what should you do with your best hands? You should value bet big. Now, the question is, how much will your opponent call the hand that he thinks is probably good? So again, this is a very, very hypothetical, but say, say you imagine that Peter in the spot has exactly a 10 or a flush or like pocket nines. How much will those hands call? I think the answer is kind of a lot, right? If he has a flush, he's not going to fold any bet. If he has a 10, he's probably not going to fold any bet. When I say any bet, I mean like $2,500. I think that would be pretty sweet. Notice here, if John did have ace of diamonds and a blank, he'd like to bet big to try to get some hands to fold, right? Um, so this is a spot in live poker where I'm probably just going to bet pretty big with the pocket fours because the 10's not going to fold, which is a very likely hand for the button. And a flush is not going to fold. That's a very likely hand for the button. And if the button does have ace of diamonds blank, he's going to fold to any bet, right? Now, next question becomes, if I was bluffing, how much would I bet? Well, we're trying to get ace high to fold. Like say I did have queen jack or something right here. I would be betting on the smaller side because ace high is probably going to fold to any bet. So I bet something like $450 into the $1,340 pot, recognizing no pair is going to fold but I'm trying to get a side of fold, which also could be a large chunk of the button's range. Obviously, this is very unbalanced, very exploitative, but this is often the right strategy in live poker against opponents who maybe you have a little bit of a live read on. So I definitely like a big bet from John. I, like I would hate to see a $400 bet here. I think that'd be especially awful. Really, the bigger the better, up to something like $2,500 into the $1,300 pot. As you start going bigger than $2,500, two times pot. <laughs> As you start going bigger than two times pot, I think you do start to fold out some tens and perhaps even some weak flushes, and that would be terrible, right? So I like a pretty big bet. Also worth mentioning, um, some people will never call an over bet. <laughs> I don't know anything about Peter's strategy here, but if... if you are against an opponent who is just never paying off a big bet, then, well, again, your strategy becomes very easy, right? With your bluffs, always over bet. And with your nut hands, always bet 1,100 or so. Because then the 1,100 bet, the you know 80% pot bet, is going to get called very frequently. 
but the two thousand dollar bet's going to get folds very frequently. So, if if your opponent's going to play in a manner that you very clearly understand, then you know do whatever plays right into whatever they're doing incorrectly. That said, I very rarely have reads that are that accurate on my opponents because I don't play with the same players on a regular basis since I travel and play tournaments for the most part. Well, tournaments and cash games, but the games are against people who I don't play with on a regular basis. If you are playing with people on a regular basis, by the way, or if you, like, let's say you are in, in Jacksonville and you're playing at Best Bet every day, watch every stream that takes place there and take notes on everyone who you play against. That's going to go a long way to helping you figure out how to maximally exploit every specific player. And keep notes. I mean, I have a note file on my iPad where I write down notes on the regular tournament grinders. When I see anything that I think is um, out of line that I could use in the future, I'm taking note of that. And that every time I go to play, I open up that file, read the notes on my opponents, and you know add to it as I, I'm playing. Uh, but if you are playing in, a, in the same local casino, you really need to have notes on all of your opponents. So anyway, he bets 1100 I think this is just a tough spot for the Jack-10. Seems like an easy call to me. Yeah, you lose to the flushes, but you beat over pairs that may value bet. You beat the ace-high bluffs, so easy call. And I actually think Peter, assuming he calls, he does call. I think Peter played this hand fine besides the preflop call. Um, whenever you have top pair in the spot, it's a marginal made hand you need to call. Same thing on the turn. And on the river, Peter did a great job of recognizing that this is not a nut hand. If you raise here, what's going to call you? Well, flushes and boats and good tens, right? So there's absolutely no purpose in raising whatsoever here. And I think Peter played the hand very well post-flop. Um, John did bet 1100. That could be the right bet size. That could be a little bit small. But I'm very glad to see that John did not make the mistake a lot of people make on the river of betting something like, $300 thinking, oh, I really want to get calls. So I'm going to bet only 300 That is not a good strategy. You definitely want to be betting bigger in these spots where your opponent's range is either a very good made hand that you beat or like ace high that's going to fold to any bet. So that's going to be it for this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click like, click subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify or wherever else, leave a review. That goes a long way to helping me and it costs you well, 30 seconds of your time. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Good luck in your games. And I'll talk to you next week.